Well, I'd like to call the Water Sewer Commission's meeting to order February 1st at, uh, what time do you got? 6... 618. 618. Okay, first order of business is the Systems Manager's uh, reports. All right, so we got two months' work. I'll start with the Sewer December report. So we had 3.65 inches of rain. Flow was 7 point, or 5.749 million gallons for an average of 185,000 gallons a day. Cinegro hauled off 104,400 gallons. Uh, wasted 125,615 gallons for an average of 4,053 gallons a day. We used 691 gallons of alum, zero gallons of sodium hydroxide. 392 kilowatt hours of electricity and the river flow was 201.326 cubic feet per second. Uh, we're preparing for the first quarter toxicity testing. Number one filter has been prepped for the internal maintenance and we received the bulk delivery of Alan. <coughs> right, so to elaborate a little because we haven't met and discussed a lot of this stuff. So we pulled the filter down to do the rehab. So we had budgeted to rehab one filter um, with the filters and everything. So when we went to pull down, we went to pull down a particular filter, but when we took it down, we realized that the pipe on the bottom had rotted, which does the backwash. Um, so we had to rehab the other one because that one wouldn't work and we didn't want to put new filters in and then have to do some welding and stuff inside the tank. So um, the epoxy coating had started to fail on both. I mean, they're, they're in a hazardous environment, so, you know, the, the water that sits in them constantly is kind of aggressive, so um, we switched over and rehabbed the other filter first, so we put all new filters and everything, and we took the other one offline, drained it down, took everything out of it, and have it ready to get it recoded, but we have to get the entire thing sandblasted down to white metal, and then we have to get the pipes that rotted off re-welded in. Um, it was on a weird angle? I think you told me about that. Yep, so it's on an angle like this yeah. and the pipe comes through straight so it's it's yeah. a screwy yeah, setup. If it was a straight, on a straight wall coming through, I'd probably just go to a bulkhead fitting because it's easier to replace. We could go with plastic instead of iron. It wouldn't rot. Um, it just would make a lot more sense. Um, so unfortunately we got to have some welding done. We got to get the, the filter prepped. Um, so we got some prices to try to do that and it looks like it's going to be probably in excess of 25000 to get that portion done and we have all the material to redo the filters which was around twenty five. actually I think it was 33000 to complete the first one but we have it all set up and we've gone through all the process with them doing the first one so we'll just do the second one ourselves and we have all the material to do that, so this one will essentially be done in new um, at a little over 25000 <clears throat> And then once that's done, we can finish the pilot study to determine getting the chemical, the correct chemical and the dosage correct and the chemistry correct, and determine whether we want the 5 micron or the 10 micron filters, because we'll have one set up with 10 and one set up with 5, and then we can run that testing to see which one gives sufficient results to meet permit, um, including the new parameters of the new permit that's coming out. Because uh, we do have an aluminum limit now, and we are running on the 5 micron filters, which is what I originally said we needed to get to in order to meet the limit on the proposed permit that I anticipated. Um, and so we have run a couple tests on the aluminum right now, and we're within the permit numbers that they're proposing. So we look like we're in good shape, but I think if we finish the pilot study and get it determined as to if we can achieve that with the 10 micron and the right chemistry with the right chemicals, it may be better to go to the 10 micron instead of the 5 micron. I mean, we'll probably get better removal with the 5, but we run the risk of having some issues of blinding the filters and not being able to keep up. Um, and I just get more concerned about that as we increase the capacity coming into the treatment plant. So when we're running at higher flows, 
more frequently, mm -hmm. um, we would run the risk of blinding those filters and not keeping up as well with the, the higher micron filter. So um, that's where we stand with that. Okay. Like I said, I just want to kind of give you guys an update. Yeah. <clears throat> So that will have to be discussed on. So that was and that was budget item. That was and you said that was going to be probably like twenty five thousand. A little limit in, in excess of twenty five. I think the, the first quote that we had for the we got a bunch of quotes just to sandblast that and get. So that's a yeah. filter upgrade project. Yeah. Filter, filter. Yeah. Filter rehab. I'll call it. Okay. Okay. So then we have the. Uh, that was February's report. Uh, no, he just named it February because it's that's the month. That yeah, was, so that, that was December. December, report. yeah, February first uh, meeting. So, do you want to do the December water report, or do you want to do the January sewer? Report? Which whatever your pleasure. All right, so we'll just keep it in the, keep the months together. Okay. So for the December water report, we get the water flows from November just oh, to keep it consistent. With things. So in November we pumped 6.068 million gallons of drinking water for an average of 195,752 gallons a day. We used 454 gallons of KOH and 306 gallons of batched chlorine. Uh, sampling for the month came back clean. System repairs, uh, we did service line leaks at 154 in 7 Yasino. Uh, by static trucking and uh, porter. Uh, let's see. Monthly maintenance. We had the pH probes calibrated at all three pump stations. The tank inspections checked and pumped hydrants uh, used for pressure monitoring or flushing. So we were doing a lot of data loggers on the hydrants. Um, so we went around and so made sure they all drained and. and Go back. So the system repairs, you had 154 main, 70 as you know, and so Staric did one and, and Porter did the other one? Correct. Um, neither one of these were us. Yeah. So those were uh, customer side. Okay. So we didn't we didn't contract the... Okay, that's why I was wondering if we did that. That's why, that's why I figured you were yeah. asking. That's why I'm okay. explaining. I just, I didn't 154 see any, I didn't chose see that. Oh, Staric and, and uh, okay. you see no one with Porter to okay. get the work done. Yep. Uh, Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, we had two meters replaced, five final reads. Final reads have been going crazy in the last year. Uh, one new connection and meter install in the new subdivision over uh, Sleepy Hollow. We got bulk delivery of KOH at the pump stations. We did markouts and met with property owners at 26 Charles. Uh, That ended up being groundwater as well. Which one? Uh, over 26 Charles, they had water oh, okay. pouring in, mm -hmm. um, but it was groundwater. Uh, 169 Main Street, uh, plug sewer line, uh, GBI, <coughs> Riley's leak, uh, lane. So we weren't sure what it was. So we had gone up there and we were trying to mark everything out, and everybody was calling, complaining that we were walking through the yards because we found old water gate valves up in the back of, I want to say it was 207. Um, so that's like the third one in from Riley's driveway. Top is second looks so. No, so you got uh, Stevens. Yeah, and you got the, the daughter, Wagner, and everything. Yeah, the there. daughter and then the next one. Oh, the white, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one, we found two valves up in the back, but they were old style, like the uh, gate valves with the round handles. Mm -hmm. um, we found them and, you know, excavated down with the vacuum cleaner and tried to get them to shut off, but they won't work at all. So we tried marking out where that li those lines went. So there was two different lines. We figured one went down kind of towards the driveway of that property. One went across kind of the back sides of all those properties. Mm -hmm. and it almost looked like it went over to where this leak was, uh, trying to use locators and stuff, but uh, it was hard. Nothing was coming in good on it, so. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if, if that one of those lines runs right behind all those houses. The yeah. Feedback, because it was a sewer line that ran right behind all those houses and just dumped into the, into the water. Into the water, yeah. 
That's and that's kind of what I had anticipated a little bit. Yeah. Um, but we we never got it really resolved. So you know, the property owner there wanted us to go up and dig it up and find out what the water was leaking. And I told them it's private property. We don't yeah. have the right to get there. So he would need to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, we could fix it if there's a leak, but you know, we can't do the excavations on private property. So. He had someone come up and dig it, and it just turned out to be groundwater. So, and, and I explained that to him in the beginning that it's been the heaviest rain or the, the most rainfall we've had yeah, this year. In, in in as far as we can record. You know. So, you know, I, I said it may just be groundwater coming off the hill, yeah. <clears throat> and that's what it turned out to be. So, okay. um, so he's just reiterating that the, the sewer backwash arms and all the manifolds and all that stuff taken out of the, the treatment plant filter, cleaned it all up, emptied it out. So it's ready. We just got to <coughs> get the price in and, and uh, pick whoever it is and make sure we get some funds to do it. So we'll probably be shooting for you know, July 1st to get moving on that. We certainly don't have any money left in this budget to, to do any of these bigger projects. Mm. All right, so the monthly sewer report for January, we have 4.6 inches of rain. Center Grove hauled 87,000 gallons off. We had a flow of 5.783 million gallons with an average of 186, 558 gallons per day. Wasted 134,575 gallons at an average of 4,341 gallons per day. Used 621 gallons of alum, zero gallons of sodium hydroxide. We used 439 kilowatt hours of electricity. The river average was 140.716 cubic feet per second. So, from the last report, we did the toxicity testing. We passed that. Uh, the annual analysis for the waste sludge to Cinegrove has been performed. The still wall for the number three SBR was flushed out. Uh, last week of this month saw Arctic temperatures and excessive snowfall. That was a snowstorm we're all aware of and we did. It was a good one. Yeah. The, um, <clears throat> with the sewer report, any follow-up at the generator? Um, April was the last I heard. Um, so I'll call them again to find out where we stand, make sure there hasn't been any additional delays. Because every April, time we get last these... April, next April. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be this April. Yeah. So, so this is supposed to be this coming April. Yep. And then the primary water station is supposed to be in October. But yeah, so that got moved up. That day. wasn't that one October too. No, one was October. One was so, okay. April. Right, so it hasn't uh, changed. Yeah, it didn't change yet. I'll call them again just to verify again. But uh, yeah, it's it's a little absurd with all the delays and being able to get anything generators, pipe. Oh, I know. Top. I'll get to the pipe part when we get to some of the other updates, but. Um, all right, so the December or the January water report, which flows from December. So we pumped 5.8 million gallons of water for an average of 188,000 a day. We used 434 gallons of KOH, 284 gallons of batch of chlorine. Uh, sampling for the month, we sampled bacteria. We also sampled the PFAS again. Uh, PFAS numbers came in again pretty close to what they were, under five. So that's good. It's like the you know, consistent with the first round that we did. So hopefully we'll have two more good rounds and then uh, can cut back on the sampling. But yeah, that's that's good. That's uh, good. One of the other things I just got email in. Um, unfortunately, we got tagged with. We have to participate in the UCMR five. So that's where like these numbers come from. They randomly pick systems and they make them do all these new contaminants so they're unregulated that's what the ucmr stands for unregulated contaminant monitoring rule so they have a whole bunch of contaminants that 
they require a certain number of systems to test to kind of get a feel for around the state if there could be problems with the other contaminants. Um, part of that is another 29 uh, PFOS contaminants on the list. So there'll be 29 additional other than the six that we currently test for. It's not, they're not regulatory samples, it's just to give kind of a baseline and let them get a feel for if there's a potential issue throughout the state um, that needs to be identified and dealt with through regulation. So they'll take all this data from all the systems that are required to do it. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the main reason I bring it up is that we're going to be doing some additional sampling. And like I said, it's 29 additional PFOS contaminants where the original six cost around $700 a test. So now we've got to do those and we'll end up having to pay for it. So I will have to factor in a little bit on the budget to cover the additional sample for the use of our testing. So I got an email uh, regarding PFOS testing. But then what they're doing is, is uh, the state's actually they've selected a whole oh, bunch for, of towns to do private wells. Yeah, so if the town is less than 60%, I think, yeah. served by water, um, then, then uh, they're eligible for testing for the private wells. I checked, I put it in there, so it wasn't eligible. I was going to say, we're, we're not because we serve, you know, I think our, our population is 38, so we're more than, we're more than the, yeah. so I, I said, so there must be really they're going to private wells and they're going to they're going right across the whole state. Yeah, well they've realized that it's a bigger problem yeah. than than just public water supplies. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's in everything. Yeah. Like we discussed before, that it's yeah. in all the stuff that you're eating. I think Maine had some... Maine had some deer. Some deer, deer that they Fairfield said... Cone. Fairfield. Yeah, yeah. No, they said that if you, you can't eat any it. deer in Fairfield, you shouldn't eat it. Yeah. Right. They're going to give you an extra tag next year. <laughs> As they said, really? Yeah. Just throw it away and uh, don't eat it. And then yeah. 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 So, like I said, it's all over the place. Um, and I saw that as well, also on the, on the private wells, and I knew we weren't going we to fit in the numbers. Because it would have been nice to get that in, um, just to get a feel for outside of our area. Mm -hmm. I mean, we lucked out and we're, we're in good shape with our wells, but we don't know if private residents could be drinking this uh, in high levels. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking that I'm like, well, if it, they do the private wells, because primarily this side of town is all the public water, and the rest of the town is, is private wells, so it right. gives an idea of this around, surrounding right around. So yeah, so we, we can see if it's a hot spot somewhere else, right. and we might need to look at some kind of mitigation yeah. efforts in that area. But it would also indicate that maybe we need to expand the water system and pick up some more customers, you know, so that they're drinking potable area. water instead of stuff that shouldn't they shouldn't be drinking. But my thought was all the for the hydrological flows coming most of it comes this way. So right. I was thinking of something from that way. Yeah. Yeah, you might be able to catch it, catch it before. A higher thing that's yeah. that's moving this way yeah. and you know, you we haven't got the plume yet, you know. Yeah. So all right, so that was that. Uh, system repairs. Iron service leak at 33 North. Uh, we talked about that a little earlier. Uh, so that was repaired. Uh, so this one was 33 right over here. Um, they had an iron service. And again, that was a customer side. We, they hired LaFrance to come in and take care of it. Uh, let's see. Leaking meter valve at 7 Spring Street repaired. It was curved off and changed the packing nut. Uh, iron service leak in the vicinity of 15 North Street. That was the one that we ended up shutting down the main street. That was us. Highway Doug did the digging for us. Um, he replaced the pickup and reed switch in the turbine flow meter at turbine. Um, yeah, it's a turbine meter and it was at turbine. So. Uh, we haven't had any trouble since he replaced that part. Uh, we put new injection checks on both chemicals at primary, replaced the backup battery at primary's mission RTU, uh, replaced the chlorine metering pump at Glen, uh, rebuild kits, wouldn't fit the old pump. Uh, let's see, tank inspections were done, changed the analyzer filter cartridges at Glen, 
replaced one meter, did three final reads. Uh, we had no new connections or meters installed. Filled the LP tanks at all four water locations. The oil tank filled at Mobile. National Grid escorted to three water stations and one sewer station for meter programming. Uh, snow removal from the three storms. COI training online. Multiple Zoom trainings for water and wastewater TCHs. Fire hose cleaning still well, SBR number three at the treatment plant. Went to Goopman's for ice melt, snow brushes, and trash bags. Any questions on any of those? Nope. So you could have been busy. Yeah. That's an understatement. Huh? So that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, with all everything else going on on top of it. So then uh, there's the reports. Mm -hmm. uh, project update. We'll do the yep, project updates. All right. So we submitted the application for the EDA grant. Um, so we had to break out. We had the whole project, which is you know, roughly $8.5 million for the upgrade of the water line coming down North Street from the 8-inch cast iron that it currently is to the 16-inch duct line to connect to the 12-inch ductile that we installed going through the bridge when they did the whole culvert project down in there. So that will connect to the new pipe that we installed a few years ago, and then we'll take off with a new 12-inch on the other side of the bridge going down Gilboa Street to replace the existing 6-inch cast iron line. It's probably choked down to a 3 or 4-inch line. And, um, between the North Street intersection and the Mill parking lot, and then from the mill parking lot, it's new ductile that they installed back when they connected the shell station. So it's new ductile from there to the shell station. That'll be left alone. We'll probably do a tap for the mill to tie them into the fire protection. And we'll do a tap for a service because their service line doesn't look too well. But I'd like to get any work done in these roads ahead of time. So if there's any connections or anything that we're going to do that we need to be in the road, I'd rather get those done while we're doing this project before we do a full overlay, which would be about a year later. So once we install all this, a year later, because you want to let it settle and go through a frost to determine if we're going to have any mm -hmm. sinking or anything. Um, so the roads will be messed up for about a year. Uh, and then from the shell station where the 12-inch line ends, we'll continue with the 12-inch line down to the Skinnell project on the other side of 146, which was the old Mary Bedoin pro property there. So they have a 650,000-plus square foot building going in there um, that they're, we agreed to provide them water and sewer um, to move the project forward. It's, it, it is in all three towns, so it's right on the corner of Douglas. So there's a portion in Douglas, a portion in Uxbridge, and a portion in Sutton. Um, but we were the only viable source for water and wastewater to get to that project, to, to let it move forward. Um, so that's the water line there and then we'll be increasing the water line from beginning at Davis Street all the way down Northeast Main to the town line with a 12 inch um, right now it's three different types of material we've got some casts some AC and some ductile that's with 12 inch ductile that's what we'll upgrade to. It's eight inch right now. And that's with what? Which money is that coming from? So, so I'll just finish telling you all the project, and then sure. we'll I'll give you the breakdown and okay. why and how we did it. So, so that's all the water lines currently that we'll be installing through our project. Mm -hmm. At some point, we're hoping that the CRG project moves forward, and we'll be connecting the loop through the CRG project to go from Northeast Maine to Gilboa. So we'll create a loop there. It gives a lot more fire flows mm -hmm. and redundancy. You know, it's just a better system all around. So, um, and then we're upgrading the Gilboa Street pump station. So the existing one that yep. you got to climb 20 feet down the hole and the electric panels sitting there like this. Um, so we'll be replacing that with a new updated, more efficient system that can handle the higher anticipated flows from the CRG project, the Scannell project, and any 
potential project that we think may be coming down the road for the pine property at some point. So that's just a skid package that comes in, drop in. Uh, yeah, yeah it's a it's a prefab, prefab station. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it'll still more or less be underground, but we won't have to go underground. Um, there'll be a, a pump chamber that's not as deep. Like right now, our pumps are at the bottom of the of mm. the chamber, and which is deep too. Eight, 18 feet, I think, is what it's at right now. <clears throat> um, we've also requested to, to keep in mind the 100-year flood so we can raise it up to be outside the 100-year floodplain mm -hmm. um, just so we don't run into that issue. Um, the pumps will be on rails, and it will be set up so that there's a chamber that you don't have to actually enter. To It's not connected to the wet well, per se, as the current one is. Um, but the pumps will be up above, and it'll flow in a different manner than it does currently. It's a lot more safe and less mm. confined space issues and everything else. So that'll be upgraded. And then the force main from that pump station back to where it goes to gravity down this end right before it comes across the river will be upgraded from a 4-inch to a 6-inch. And then there'll be a new privately owned pump station for the Skinnell project that we'll be installing a new force main coming back to our pump station. So I don't care for pumping things twice, but the engineers overruled me on that, <laughs> saying that the way it was designed, they needed the additional flow to come into that the current pump station in order to keep everything flowing the way they think it should. Um, you know, I don't like to double pump things, so I would have put it in so that we had the ability to have them pump directly through the force main and pump it all the way to here from their pump station mm -hmm. as opposed to pumping it to our pump station and pumping it again from our pump station to here. But, like I said, the, the engineers overruled me on it. I think I could argue with them to say it's not necessary, but um, after going through it a little more, um, it simplifies things a little because instead of coming right to our pump station originally, I went through it with them earlier today and revised it a little to say have it pump with their force main to come to right around where the designed, uh, what do they call that, the connector road or mm -hmm. I forget what they called that project back 10 years ago yeah, or whatever when they, yeah, whatever <clears throat> but wherever that designed entry point was to come back to about that point and then go gravity sewer to our pump station instead of a force main all the way to our pump station because that way we can pick up the other two projects gravity as opposed to having to set up a pump station or having multiple manholes come in and a bunch of different lines going down mm -hmm. so um yeah that's what you're saying but then they're gonna have to write i'm sure they're probably doing flow calcs and to make the whole thing work properly and yeah that's yeah like i said i mean i, I know how to make adjustments in pump stations yeah. to make it work the way we need to but um, you know, well, well, have the conversation with a bit too. Sometimes, I did. <laughs> but sometimes you pick your battles. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the overall project. So what we had to do was we can't mix funds. We can't mix federal funds with federal funds. So we can't use ARPA funds with something that's federally funded. So the EDA grant that we're trying to get um, is roughly $3.3 million is what we're trying to get. Uh, we applied for that, but EDA wanted kind of a standalone project. $3.3 million? Yeah, ballpark. Yeah. Um, so they wanted a standalone project. They didn't want the whole project where we're intermingling funds. Mm -hmm. So we got the, the MassWorks grant for $3 million um, to go towards the whole project. They were fine with having a whole project approach. Um, we didn't get what we requested from them. We requested more money, but they agreed to give us three. So then we, you know, I think that they kind of recommended going after the EDA grant as well. So we attempted to get the EDA grant, but the, so some of the finagling around here and stuff was we can't wait to order the pipe, so we've separated out what was one project into basically four projects. So we have a bunch of different projects now that we have multiple funding sources, one being 
developer funds, so they'll fund a portion of it. We'll fund a portion of it through ARPA funds, and then we've got the Massworks grant, and we're trying to get the EDA grant. So the EDA grant, we had to separate the project out. They wanted kind of a standalone project, so what we did was we separated out the sewer portion because the sewer pipe isn't quite as hard to get as the ductile line right now. And, of course, we go with the most popular size of ductile, which is 12-inch, and everybody else is looking for 12-inch, too. So um, kind of seeing that coming, we decided let's hurry up and pull the materials out as a separate pro project, bid out the materials using the MassWorks funds um, so that we can get it out and in the queue, because if we don't, and we wait until we bid the whole project yeah. out, nobody will be able to get us pipe in the timeline that timeline we need. So we left the water for the Northeast Main project in with the sewer, but all the other water is separate. So we pulled all that water project out, bid out those materials. We'll be opening the bids next week. We already bid it out once, but nobody that bid on it could meet the timelines that we needed. So we had to really look at the projects and try to figure out what timelines we could we could accept and still try to meet our deadlines for providing water to the contractor as they need. So our first step is to get them construction water, which would be going from the shell station to them. So that's about 2,600 feet, 12 inch. So we said we needed that by a certain date. And then the 1,300 uh, feet of 16 inch going up here we need by another certain date, and then the remaining 12 inch by the, the last date. Mm -hmm. So it's spread out from April 1st to like July 15th in sections right, to try keep, to keep everybody to try to get it started so we can at least be moving towards what we need to and then you know gradually get the other material in, hopefully not delaying the contractor so that they can do that insulation and move right on to the next insulation. Mm -hmm without saying, all right, now you guys got to stop until we get more pipe. Um, but every supplier everywhere is saying delays are longer and longer and longer. So originally when I first heard about the delays, I was here in 12 to 16 weeks. Well, now they're up to 25 weeks. Oh boy. So when we bid it the first time, nobody could meet the deadlines, and it was in the proposal that it had to be delivered by that date or there was going to be stipulated penalties. So... Nobody could meet the requirements of it, so we had to put it back out to bid with a refined deadline. Unfortunately, we don't know if anyone can meet that deadline yet either, um, but we're kind of stuck with the contractor needing to meet their requirements. So we had to try to make it as flexible as we could, but still be aggressive to try to get it mm -hmm. in the time frames that we need. Um, and if we hadn't pulled this out and tried to take this approach, then there's no way it would even be possible to get this within their time frames. But unfortunately for them, no matter what way they went, nobody can get the pipe, so everybody's going to be in the same ballpark. So we're at the mercy of the supply chain demands right now. So anyway, we're going to open those bids next week, uh, find out. Hopefully we've got someone that can meet the, meet the time frames that we need um, so we can at least get the pipe ordered. Um, and then we should be very soon putting out to bid for all the work. Like I said, I had conversations this morning making some changes. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get all the design criteria finalized so that we can put it out to bid. Uh, the mass DOT permit, we've got that submitted. We got comments back today. We'll address those comments over the next couple days and get them back to them to get everything revised. Uh, so we can hopefully get the mass works or the DOT permit, which, which other than supply chain issues was my biggest concern on timing because uh, DOT does not work fast. So we want to try to push that through as fast as we could as well. Um, let's see. So we separated the pipe, separated the sewer, and separated that northeast project. So the problem is we can't, we can't go out to bid or anything on any of the portion that we put out to EDA until EDA approves a grant. So if, if they do award us a grant, we can't put it out to bid or anything for any of the materials or any of the project until EDA gives us a, a notice to proceed mm -hmm. if, we, if we receive a grant. 
So the three million dollars that we received is going to do the Mill Street. Well, the three million that we already received is for the whole project. Right. So the eight point five million. Right. That three million can be used for any portion any of portion. all of that, yeah. and we can intermingle the mass works with the EDA. So EDA is an 80-20 split, so they'll cover 80% of our project, and we have to cover 20%. But so we haven't got the EDA yet. Correct. So. Correct. So it's no guarantee. Right now we've got three, so we could be on the hook for 5.5. But we don't know yet, and we've already got commitment letters from the two contractors to their portion to cover what we don't get for MassWorks mm -hmm. or for an EDA grant. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we get the EDA grant, then what their contributions would be required would be low. Um, and then we've got ARPA funds to as kind of a, a stopgap to cover any difference. What's the timing on the EDA grant? <clears throat> when do they make that? April. Uh, it might be March. March or April. I forget. March or April. Um, whether we'll know if we got that or not. But holding out till April. Like we definitely could not wait till April to put the pipe out to bid, or we never would have been able to get down there. So that's why we separated things the way we did, is to try to get it so we can maximize grant abilities. But we're so we don't if we don't receive the, the EDA grant. The the line is still going to move forward from Wall Street. All the water infrastructure coming down. Everything's still moving forward. It's all going to move forward. Okay. Um, so it's just a matter of the allocation. Exactly. How, how it's going to get paid for, who's got what portions. Um, and then you had mentioned the Davis, Davis Street. That's part of the PDA grid on the Davis Street side? Yeah. The, well, on the Northeast Main. So the water line from Davis Street. So begin Northeast Main, where Northeast Main comes straight and Davis Street starts. Yeah. We'll start there because you've got the new 12-inch line that goes up to the school. Yeah. So from there, it's it's old pipe. That's where we had that down, break that one time. Yeah. Okay, I thought you. I thought I thought you said going up Davis Street. No, oh. going up Northeast Main, okay. starting at Davis. Okay. So the Davis Street project, yeah. we did get approved for another grant, where I want to say it was three hundred fourteen thousand for the engineering, to start working on that side. Okay. That's what I thought. Cause I was like, I thought we were putting the putting the <laughs> cock to the horse. I'm like, we just got the approval. Yeah, no. So, so we, we still have to do the engineering for that. So that's not as high of a priority because it's not not like these projects that are like, yeah, we need this and we need it by these dates. Um, that's kind of more of a speculative once, you know, they yeah. build it and they'll come. Um, so that's that's another project I haven't even started to tackle yet. Yeah. I was confused earlier when you were talking. I, th I thought you were talking about the water line going up Davis Street and not doing the Northeast Bay. I'm like, they switch. I, I no. Okay. Yeah. So the Northeast Main still is still. This whole project is okay. still all essentially what we originally discussed and went over and and designed to try to make those projects move forward. Okay. Great. <coughs> the Davis Street is a whole other project. project. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm not even going to get into that one right now. We'll okay. we'll have updates as we get a little further along in that project. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that project, we also have a project to go up North Street. Mm -hmm. So North Street would be looking at. We haven't finalized yet which which direction we want to go. If we're just going to upgrade water sewer, um, so water sewer, and then we'd have to do full overlay because we'd be hitting both sides of the road. Yeah. So full overlay up there, but we haven't determined yet, and it's still more conversations that we have to have with the you know, town administrator and other departments whether or not we're going to pursue trying to fix North Street. That's a big undertaking. Uh, whether we want to yeah, drainage, sidewalks, uh, straighten it out some. That's that's a huge community project that we need to have, be open and have conversations and discussions with all the people that would be affected on North Street. Because, um, you know, straightening out roads is going to be land issues, and, and I'm sure you live up there, so you, you're very familiar. You drive down every day, so um, you know, you've been here all your life, too. So. Yeah. And then you just hit the Sutton line and be back down to a cow path again. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but there's some conversations. We're in the preliminary stages of that as well. But there'll be some conversations that we need to have and we need to determine. Um, like a lot of these, these grants and stuff don't cover the design engineering. Um, SRF never covered the design engineering, but I was on a, a conference call with 
<coughs> with the SRF people um, just the other day, and we brought up the fact that you know you don't cover the design engineering, and you know it's a problem for a lot of towns, small towns that you know they need a funding source, <coughs> and a lot of times the engineering it's a big expense to put out there before you know you can move forward with something. Yeah, so. Money. So the guy that we talked to on that one, he said that, uh, that that rule was put in long before his time, and he agrees that it should probably be updated and they should include the design portion of the engineering um, in the SRF. So I'm um, going to make a few more calls into them. Um, I'll talk to that guy one-on-one because that was kind of a group conference thing that was going on. Uh, so I'll reach out to him and find out if we can kind of really start pushing that forward because we may need that. Uh, we may need to go towards applying for SRF funds to do the engineering portion of that because to do that project going up North Street is, I'll give you a ballpark, 600000 for the engineering to get us started, to get us to the point that we can apply for like a, the one-stop application for MassWorks or whatever grants may be applicable. But some of those require seventy-five percent drawings or whatever, and that's we got to put up that six hundred thousand up front in order to qualify to get some of those grants. But if SRF covered it, it'd be a, a low-interest loan um, through the state, so that would be a potential source. Um, we can probably get the same rate on our own, so I would probably push towards getting it on our own as opposed to SRF. I'm just throwing it out there that it's another option that may become available. Uh, but SRF makes you jump through hoops. It probably adds money to the project. So because you're getting 2%, don't think that you know it's a great deal because you've got to jump through a bunch of hoops, meet all their requirements, have like bi-weekly meetings with them on the phone, or usually used to be in person, but with all the COVID stuff, they do more Zoom meetings now. So but there's a lot of additional work that you have to do when it's an SRF funded project. Um, I've always pushed against SRF projects. The only time I've ever been in favor of one was one that was in Dudley because with the SRF on the PFAS treatment stuff, they were offered a 0% interest. And depending on your, your town's demographics and income, um, if you were more poverty stricken, you got a higher principal forgiveness. So if you're in a, a low-income community, then your principal forgiveness could be like 19.8%. Um, if you're in a, a more well-to-do town, it might be 13%. Um, but you get 13%, and if it's a $10 million project, you know that's $1.3 million at 0% interest, so it's a no-brainer. Take the, take the free money. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, that's about the only time I'd push to use SRF. Because, like I said, low interest, 2%, you can almost get that at the bank now, yeah. you know, being yeah, a, a town. Could, yeah. So um, I'd prefer not to jump through the hoops and manage the project we see fit as opposed to jumping through their hoops to do it their way. Because their way usually adds cost. <laughs> okay. That's good. So, like I said, those are some conversations that we have to have, probably coming up pretty soon, mm -hmm. um, whether we want to look at where we think the funding should come from, whether it be the potential project going forward, if, you know, if, they, if there's something that we see as a viable project, do we talk to them to see if they want to fund the engineering portion to try to make it so that we're eligible for some grants? Because um, ultimately it's upgrades that we need to do to make those projects viable. Right. It's tough to do until we get this first one in the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got better negotiating abilities if we've already got some projects moving forward and in the ground and you know things in place. But, you know, this is a unfortunately it's very stressful and a lot of running around for a lot of different people in town, including the town, town administrator. You know, obviously you guys know Bob and Eric's been running around like crazy. Yeah, he's been doing making yeah. making things happen. All you guys, the administrator, um, Bob and Eric, you. Yeah, you so guys really pull it together on getting these grants. And so it's just a a lot of running around trying to get this yeah. going, but I think it's a better approach than 
you know, we were always pushed in the past that, oh, you don't have water and sewer to these places, but you can't run something without knowing anticipated yeah. flows. That, you know, yeah. your pump station's got to be sized right. You yeah. can't oversize it. You can't undersize it. You know, this is just a better approach to have specific projects that you mm -hmm. can see and envision and, and they look viable as yeah. opposed to guessing and just throwing stuff in the ground and then being like, oh, well, that's not going to work, so let's rip it up and do it over. Right. You know, it just doesn't make sense. So Yeah, this is the first I, time in as long as I've been here that I felt comfortable putting money out, spending money in engineering, yeah. knowing the fact that Matt was working hard, you were working hard, Bob and Eric's working hard, and you can get to the finish line. Right. You had somebody pushing it to the finish line. Before it was, it was well, maybe this, it was pipe maybe dreams. that, maybe that. Yeah, it was pipe dreams in the past. Right. And like I said, I, I can't in good no, faith. There was, no, there was no grants to talk about any right. grants. There was no anything. Well, there was no purchase and sales signs. There, 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 there was nothing. There was nothing. Yeah, so... You know, so. I mean, this is, we know these projects are yes. moving forward. At least one of them we know is moving forward, which is three quarters of what we need out of these projects anyway. So, um, and in the long run, it worked to our advantage because it looks like we'll get about $12.5 million worth of, well, I say 12 and a half because that's including gas. Because yeah. during all this, there's also a discussion of gas coming in. So, yeah. um, but $8.5 million worth of upgrades. Yeah. Um, that we don't have to put on our rate payers. So. Yeah, we're running some gas lines and stuff. Yeah, that's part of the whole conversation. So. Mm -hmm. um, It'd be nice to get but, gas down to it. Yeah, so, you know, some of the discussions through these projects were um, at least getting it to the, the Cairo mill because there's a, a huge demand for it there. Mm -hmm. um, what we would like to see is that we're ripping up the roads and repaving them. We'd like to see the gas go up to essentially where we're going to end. So get it up to Main Street. You know, you got Hayward Landing, which I'm sure could use gas. Mm -hmm. That would probably be a huge benefit to them. Um, and then from there, we determine if we need to go further. If we you know, personally, I think it probably might be a, a smarter smarter path to go down Charles Street to get down Davis, but you know, I don't know, that's that's up to people other than me, because I don't yeah. own the gas company right. downtown. So, <laughs> so yeah, but, we just can't tap into the line right down on the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> line coming right through. I, I gotta drill. <laughs> we gotta Everybody's tap. been saying it. We gotta yes. tap the can't we just tap that line that comes yeah. through? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> High pressure. How big is that one? Uh, 30 inches or something? Yeah, it's a good size coming. The main one coming through, yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. high pressure too. Yeah, it's high it's, pressure. Yeah. 3,000 PSI or something. I'm tapping that. Mm. Mm. Good luck. No thanks. Yeah, you need a step down facility. You need all kinds of things. You can't just tap on high pressure main. All right. All right. Good. So, Thank you for that update. That was, that was very informative. That, that's some of what we've got going on. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, tie into that one to be able to go into the... So uh, as, as, as part of all that, yeah. um, you know, we originally started off at like 99000 for the engineering, then we had change order one come in. Um, can't think of it off the top of my head how, much, how many more thousand that was, another 20 or 30000 on top of that. And then uh, we had change order number three come in, or two come in. That was another fifty-four thousand. Change order three was another thirty-three thousand nine hundred. Um, so, none of this was budgeted for. It was a lot of moving things around, trying to make it work, um, just because we didn't have time to right. go to a town meeting and everything else mm -hmm. to to appropriate funds to do it the way we normally would. But, um, so in that we kind of tapped out all our sources. We don't. We just don't have the funds to to keep doing change orders. Uh, so there was the conversations with the, the contractors, um, and, you know, Scannell is on a much tighter time frame than the other project. Um, so we had some conversations with them uh, regarding the additional funds and the fees and, you know, that we're kind of tapped out. And we can't afford to wait till town meeting. Um, so they graciously agreed to, uh, to, to make a donation to cover the cost of change order number three. Number four. Or number four, yeah. too many change orders. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and just for the anybody that's interested, that's watching it, it's just the Skinnell project is the one down on uh, down on uh, Lackey Dam Road, Lackey Dam Road in, yeah. in the Tri Town. So we have three different towns, yeah. um, which did help our efforts to get the three million dollar grant because it's a Tri Town project. 
you know, it shows collaboration between the three different towns, mm -hmm. uh, working together. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to do. You get a, a lot of political people that are kind of power hungry and want their own things, and uh, to get three different towns to work together and, and make a project come together and move forward is, is kind of an accomplishment in, in, in itself. It so. is. So, uh, so we had some conversations with them. Um, so we have a letter here. Uh, I don't know if you want me to read it? Sure. Uh, so, so this is uh, dear Matt. Uh, as you are aware, the city of Douglas, Massachusetts, um, is completing certain engineering, design, bidding, agency coordination, assistance, project management, and construction services for the water sewer infrastructure upgrade project. Uh, known as the project which will benefit certain property currently under development by CH Realty, uh, IX-SP1, Boston Blackstone LP, a Delaware Limited Partnership owner that is located on Lackey Dam Road in Douglas, Sutton, and Uxbridge, Massachusetts. Uh, the city has requested that the owner fund certain costs and expenses in connection with the project, and the owner has agreed to fund the same uh, enclosed with this letter is a check made payable to the city in the amount of $33,900. Uh, owner hereby authorizes the use by the city of the fund solely for the purpose of payment of Stantec Consulting Services, Professional Service Agreement, Change Order Number 4, dated January 11, 2022. The fund shall not be used by the city for any purpose other than expressly set forth in this letter. Uh, please indicate your agreement to the foregoing by executing and returning a copy of this letter. If you have any questions, please contact Dan Strobel via email or by phone. Um, so with that, they, they gave us a check for $33,900, uh, which I would uh, ask the board to accept the donation uh, for the, the said purposes. So I'd like, to, I'd like to thank Matt for accepting that originally back uh, was on the 17th, so on the 18th. 18th. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that he stepped up and, and did that for us. And then um, I guess I guess we'd be looking for a motion to accept the, the uh, donation. Okay, so I make a motion to accept the funds of $33,900 as presented in the letter from Scannell Properties dated January 17th, 2022 as agreed to and accepted by the town administrator and chairman of the board of Silicon. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. That's going to be um, written here, if somebody needs that for the minute. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you want that to be yeah. clear. Yeah. Precisely. Okay. All right, so budget discussion. Um, I added that. That was supposed to be in the last month's meeting. We didn't, weren't able to, to complete last month's meeting. Um, so I just have kind of last year's budget with the previous years um, set here. Um, I'm just looking for what approach you want to take. Um, I'll come up with a list of kind of the out of the ordinary projects like I've done in the past few years. What, what's the, um, so for the actual that we're in now, what's the date that these numbers would be? Well, from? this was 2021, so I don't have the current year's numbers here. So that All right, was, so this, I'm sorry, so this is This is just strictly last year's budget okay. as presented. I'm just looking for kind of the path you want me to take. Um, so you know, 20, we've this, changed it a couple times as to how we kind of. So this column, this right column of 2022, is essentially the current budget that the, we're the like. current budget, and we don't know what we've used so far. Correct. Runs us to July. Um, I may actually have some. Or Gene sent me an email earlier today, which may have some of those numbers in them. Okay. I can probably go print them. Um, or I can. Yeah. Well, if you want to ask her to send it to us to save you the. The hassle of that, and we'll have it up to the minute. Yeah, just email us all. The yeah, I'll forward it. She always forgets me, so just, you know. Does she have the email? I, I would think so. I mean, it's been 10 years, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Maybe you're not in the I still feel so. like the new guy. 
Well, you are. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the scope of uh, Joe, to Josie. Josie. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm still a new guy compared to Josie. So I'll have uh, Gene send us updated um, expenditure and revenue reports. Yeah, that would be revenue would be great. So you can kind of look at where we stand with both of those. Yeah. So I, one approach I think that I'd like to, I'd like to look at to pick up in the in the uh, FY twenty. No, it actually, actually was twenty one. FY twenty one, and the FY twenty two budget. We had those all those projects that we had listed out. We did, we did whatever we didn't complete. Mm -hmm. To try to carry those, so we should fulfill all those. And yeah. If there's anything that we that we ran short on, on money, I know because this year was. Yeah, because I had to pull some of those right. around. Um, so we still have the option, and it's one of the things I wanted to discuss was we have the option to go to town meeting as a special town meeting to get the funds back because we kind of move things around just to get Keep these projects right. moving forward. Yeah, I, understand I still need the projects to move forward that we had anticipated. Right. Yeah. Um, but at this point in the game, I could potentially push it off to July 1st if I have to on some of them. Um, some of them I prefer not to, and I prefer to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, well, think of, I mean... Yeah, so I'll go through and I'll make a recommendation yeah. for you guys, but like I said, it's if you're against trying to replenish the money that we already kind of earmarked for projects, yeah. that's one thing. Um, I guess I'm thinking... I know, you want to see what we've done, because we, we budgeted money, we knew the projects needed to be done, yeah. and we want to move forward with those projects. Right. So we want to see where we stand. I'll let you know what's left that hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be some additional ones that come on this year that yep. weren't on the last two years. So I'll go through all those and try to give you guys what my recommendation as the approach to refund some of them and then fund, you know, move others into next year. Mm -hmm. And then the new ones that come on, we determine if we want them done this year or the following. And then also take, take in consideration... Your workload, what you got coming down the line with all these projects, how much you can handle as well. So, right. So, so try to time management on that as well and the, and the financial side of that. And it'll be helpful if we can fill those other positions, which yeah. is another thing with the salary budget. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to discuss that with you guys um, as to how we want to take the approach on the salaries. Um, you know, personally, my opinion is to, to fund the salaries at the highest rates just to give the option without having to go to town meeting to come back. I mean, whatever we hire them at, it's not like I can take that yeah. money and say, hey, I got extra money, I'm going to spend it. You know, it goes back to retained earnings. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't want to, I mean, we took a different approach to the rates and the setting. You know, we'll go through and see where we stand with all those. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's a better approach than, you know, in my opinion, I think we wasted money on some of those rate studies that we did in the past. I think we can probably do a better job internally if we have time to do it. So it's a matter of getting the positions filled to free me up a little bit yeah. so I can put some more effort into it to show you guys where we stand and what what steps we need to make to get to where we need to be. Um, but knowing that, and I'd want to have it clearly written out as to where we came up with the numbers and then as we progress through and get positions filled, we can revise what those numbers are anticipated to be for the year as opposed to what we originally estimated for the funds. Because I don't want to use inflated numbers to set rates. No. So I want to use the actual numbers, and I think we're in a little better shape now. And if these projects move forward and we get the additional revenue from these other sources, right. it'll certainly help. And I don't think we need to address rates anytime in the near future you know, this next year or so. Um, well, the current salaries, I believe, covered a two, is it two or three additional. Three. Three additional under the current. The current. Correct. So, so these should not a, be far off, okay. but the positions um, through the whole process of reevaluating the positions and establishing yeah. the new positions that need to get into the personnel bylaw and the Which charts. Is, yeah, that's for the... Which meeting is that going to be to take place at? So that'll be the, the... We were trying to have it for a special town meeting. I don't know if we're going to actually have a special town meeting. Right, it's not ask. up to me. Yeah, no, I know that. Yeah. You know, when we... 
when we determine that, if that comes up, then I will. So I did have a conversation with Matt today over the whole positions. Um, essentially that, you know, when these projects start, which is in April. It's, it's, I, keep, <laughs> I keep thinking of this, and I keep thinking, if they don't have that special town meeting, and we can't get the know, job so, descriptions, which, you know, we have to get people on board. Right. So in my conversation with him today, you know, based on how everything's written, he can essentially approve my positions now to get them out and at least get applicants and get them posted mm -hmm. and take that step. You know, that takes some time and there's a process to go through. So I can I can eliminate some of the time wasted on that mm -hmm. and get that moving forward now under his authority to get that moving as a personnel bylaw person. Yeah. His, his authority is under right. that board. He's um, entrusted to <clears throat> Right. Execute the <laughs> so, like I said, I just had that conversation with him today, so I'm going to move forward on starting to work on getting those posted. Um, so it's just, I mean, we've got the positions funded, yeah. and I know some funds had to be moved around, but still with the portion that we're at in the year, there's enough funds to fund those positions for the re remainder of the year. So the job <clears throat> description just have to, let's, let's Matt approves those, then, then we should be able to move forward on that. And then, under his authority, he can we can move forward with that, but that still has to be approved. Time. Still has to be approved. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So makes, makes sense. So there was an attempt to, you know, there was there was discussion of a special town meeting because we needed some things to move forward for these projects, so that we were going to have an actual special town meeting mm -hmm. outside of the normal special town meeting, you know, in advance of the annual and special town meeting in May. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, I wanted to add that to this portion just because I really need to get people in here because yeah. all this construction is supposed to start in April. Yeah. And I mean, you guys know what we have for staff and you know the, the level of stuff that we need to do. Um, it's just. <laughs> so I think I think we talked about it before on what we the initial. I know this, we get funded for three three positions. I think the initial we wanted to get the two most important was. The, uh, Labor well, the, the sewer position, I think, was the, the original yes. key position we wanted, and then the lower level oh, no. split labor position, yeah. and, and then yeah. the water labor, the water, the water operator under the primary. Yeah, operator. yeah. so yeah, I think like a, that would have been like the third position. The third position. Right. That would be a, if, right. if the person that comes in for the laborer's position <clears throat> wants to move up, to move up and has and, and yeah, we trade that, that, option. <clears throat> that option versus try it. So. And there's definitely a lot of labor and so, stuff that needs to be done yeah. that these guys are oh, doing yeah. that they yeah. should yeah. Yeah. just I mean, waste time on that crap is ridiculous, but yeah. <clears throat> but so and I understand what you're saying. I mean my thought is all three positions need to be filled. We put them all out there, whichever ones we can fill, we fill. My anticipation is that the low level will be the first one that is easily filled or more easily filled. Right. Um, the other two positions are going to be tough. I mean, I've got ads. Yeah, that's what. That's I've what got I'm ads saying. daily from towns everywhere, and everybody's that's saying, right. "I need an operator." You know, you know, all my I got groups that you know other superintendents and and we all have conversations, and everybody's in the same boat. You just can't find operators. And now, um, some of the people from the, the certification board said that, you know, in the next five years, there's going to be another ten to twenty five percent of operators retiring. So that's just going to make it even yeah. more difficult. Um, yeah, I think I, I like the idea of, I know we, like I said, we do need to fill them all, but I think that it may be easier to, and if we get the right person that comes in and wants to advance themselves, and if it, if it has some, we may hire somebody that has no no interest in advancing the ability that, then it's okay. Now we have to let's, let's look for us, right. another one. But, but like it may, said, it may I think be easier to move somebody through the rank than it is to actually put somebody in. Yeah. So but I agree on, too. On, just run all three. But if, you, if we run all three, yeah. Because yeah. 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 who knows? You might get someone right. that gets mad at his boss and says, ah, "I'm out of here. I'm just going to go take that position." Yeah. You never know. I mean, that's, that's true. I, I hear that all the time too. Talking with operators, oh, he's a jerk. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. and, you know, if he if he does this, I'm out of here. And I'm like, yeah. all right, <laughs> I'll give you my number. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but, take this with you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. no, that's a, I like that you know, approach. And yeah, I, approach. like I said, I. I truly anticipate that the low level will be the easiest one to fill first, mm -hmm. which will probably, actually, I already know someone that's pounding the door down. I'm sure you've heard about it 5,000 times already. <laughs> it's like a weekly email and a phone call, you know, asking if the positions are posted yet. <coughs> um, I think you probably know yeah. the, the person, but 
like I said, I think that entry level will be the easiest to fill and will probably be the first one that gets filled. Um, the other two positions... The wastewater, I think, is going to be the hardest one. I don't know. That might be easier. The water operators is what I see the most posted, most yeah. vacancies, and most demand right now. And it's because the wastewater regulations haven't changed much. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty standard. People are getting frustrated with this PFOS and with the lead and copper changes. And there's just constant change in the regulations on the water side. And unless you're either, you know, a lot of the, the old school water operators, superintendents, they were kind of set in their ways. It was kind of the good old boy network. And hey, yeah, yeah, we'll just let that go, do it this way. And it's not the case anymore. Just the regulations and, and the oversight and the constant topics coming up. And the older guys that have been in the industry for a long time are just like, I don't want to deal with this. You know, this is crazy. I well, there's a certain level of responsibility, retire. too. I mean, people are ingesting that stuff. You know? There is. And that's the thing is, you know, all this stuff wasn't as prevalent back then because they didn't test for it. Now that they're testing for it and it's coming out and there's more things to learn about. And, I mean, start getting into per and polyfluoro hydrocarbon, you know. And a lot of these people, you know, this industry was kind of, you, know, you get out of high school, you kind of get into the field and you work your way up. So you weren't, you don't have a, a biochemical engineering degree. You know, it's, and, and it's more leaning more and more towards that. So unless you're good at chemistry and good at understanding those things, it's hard to progress and be able to pick up on the things like the PFOS and, and things. So a lot of the people are just like, yeah, I've had enough. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to retire. And then I'm going to just go get a part-time job. And, you know, because most of them are municipal jobs, so they have retirement plans in place they got enough years in because you know like i said a lot of these positions where you got in into them when you were young and just kind of held that position and you get your years in and, and slowly progress up the ladder a little bit and you know, at some point you're just like yeah this is too much headache to deal with but yeah. luckily i came from a lot of stress and the, the, the position i came from before i came here was all over the place dealing with everything so you know, I can adapt to the changes and all that stuff a little easier than a lot of the people that were just brought up through one system and they don't understand yeah. it. They haven't been exposed the private, to the private side versus the... Right. <clears throat> and I mean, on the private side, like I said, I, yeah. I was overseeing almost 200 different si systems. So you think about the problems we have here and multiply that by 200, but 200 different variations of it. So Yeah, somebody could come up with a problem here and you'd be like, well, where's the problem? Yeah. So that's a problem. <laughs> right. That's, yeah, that's, that's not a problem. That's, 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 that's easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I understand. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I would almost recommend to anyone getting into the industry to start off as a, as a contract operator. You just get exposed to so much, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's such a rat race that, you know, like I said, I used to drive 65,000 miles a year, just running around the systems. It was just constantly one problem after another. Mm -hmm. And because you're dealing with so many systems, you're dealing with the DEP and the EPA constantly. Mm -hmm. So you get to know them all and you understand, you know, their mindsets That's and it. what they're looking for. And uh, it helps you yeah. establish a good relationship with them. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's my, the biggest thing in the, in the budget discussion would be just to go, to go back to those, because all the projects mm -hmm. from the 2021. 21, 22, 22 then projected 23, yeah. potentially 24. And try to pick up the the ones that we didn't get those first. Yep. And then add the new, you know, the new projection ones that we're looking at. Yeah, so I think pretty much the majority of everything that we had proposed, mm -hmm. we either have agreements in place, like generators. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the, I mean, those we anticipated six, seven months ago. It was delayed far too long. So there's already agreements in place that money set aside. It's already accounted for. We can't can't stray from that. Yeah. Um, we have the agreement in place with the the pilot study. Um, it's just a matter of them getting the time to come in here. Uh, they've been running around like crazy too with all these you know, all these different treatment things. The PFAS stuff that all requires pilot studies and everything. So everybody's scrambling to try to get these things done. And those are kind of priority because there's strict limits on people need to get this stuff in place um, or they provide bottled water so, yeah. so you get a you get a town that does a couple million gallons a day of water and uh, they have to provide bottled water everyone you know they're gonna they're gonna take priority over us trying to do a pilot study on our treatment plant to just refine some numbers mm -hmm. 
Um, so on the on, so. on the uh, on the budget portion, so I guess a lot of a lot of the numbers in the budget once you get once they're you get fine tuned, they're yeah. straightforward. Just maybe maybe if you know, if the cost went up two percent, three percent, whatever it might be, you build that in. So the the project numbers I think was two hundred and. It was a little bit off. I, I know the number I that you keep exact. throwing out. There was something that was a budget item that was outside of the normal. Like I think those PFAS sampling. Okay. Um, it was listed in the additional because it was something outside of the normal, but it's yeah. something that normally needs to be budgeted because it was a, a regulation change that's going to be recurring. You know, every year we so still was, have to do the sampling. So, that was shifted. The, right. So there's some. I, I know there was something in there. I don't have it in front of me. That okay. was. Um, I know the FY twenty one was like one hundred seventy something thousand dollars of projects. Yeah. Then it was then it was increased in the FY twenty two, but a portion of that was going to be put back into the regular right. regular operating budget. Correct. So I guess we could look at those numbers. The rest of the numbers, I think it's just a matter of adjusting. Yeah. So we, and we, that's like I said, that's I just wanted to know the approach that you guys wanted to take. Adjust the salaries for the potential new positions, yeah. and whatever has to happen with the. The anticipated chart changes, you know, and, and so the, forth. The operations, the projected uh, projects. I got it right here. I don't say it's probably in this one. Yeah. 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 You know, we're not going down the rabbit hole at 730. No. No, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> okay, just, just I see sure. you trying to look at you, grabbing it. I see you. Give me a seat. This was, uh, uh, there's no data on it. This would be FY21, this would be FY22. So you've got the original from 21 that we had moved around. So, right, so this one was 177. So, I don't yeah. know what that was. I don't know that we appropriated, I remember, on the, on the. Yeah, so this was this was the the older one. Yeah. It, was, it was updated for the 22 because some things yeah, changed with the. Uh, we don't have to get it value. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've got, got it. it I've got the more updated version yeah. of my computer. But I have, I have the. It was actually on these sheets, but I, I have, have the FY21 and the spreadsheet. I don't have the FY22. I don't have that in. Yeah, so it's actually on these sheets, but yeah. Seeing you two guys with the glasses, I figured you don't you don't like my versions where they yeah, come out where they're they like this. Yeah, <laughs> magnifying glass plus so, the glasses. I'll so I so I took those Can't columns. Cut my steak off. without them now. I'm going on that. <laughs> So I took those columns off so that these these could be increased and yeah. still kept to one page each. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll have, like I said, I just wanted to get. I really don't have time to to duplicate my efforts multiple times. So I really just want to try to. No, I don't. I like hit this once and too. try to right. keep. Right. You know, That's, often that we right. have multiple meetings, and I'd rather try to dial it into what you guys are looking for right off the bat and I'm not wasting my time. Once you get once you get the, the, the basic numbers. Yeah. I mean all this stuff is pretty straightforward. Right. And then you plug in the numbers that are gonna change. So that's why that was my whole goal of getting yeah into the system so we know the next yeah. budget makes it a lot easier to just come in and say, okay, what's changing? Yeah. You know, it's minimal minimal numbers on some increases, something that goes down a little bit, typically yeah. doesn't but and then the projects you can just change the numbers around and, and plug the numbers in and do it yeah, so, so it simplifies the budget process as well. As right, I know, I understand. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'd like to put a lot more effort into it. If I had more time, yeah. I would. But yeah. you know, and I can break it down with each one if you want. And it'll be a, it'll, but be, a, it'll yeah. be a twenty page I didn't, budget, didn't. but it's easier for you guys to go through. The first, the first to establish that, I'd like to do that. And I think it should be done every so many years. Just don't go back and say zero okay, it out, zero it out, and yeah. start, and then go through it. But once you get it zero the first time, you don't need to do it every year. Okay. I mean, it's not going to change. No, I mean, yeah. it's a small amount. A lot of, of these that, things yeah. are pretty standard, straightforward. Yeah. You know, I mean, some of them may go up with the end additional flows. Yeah. I don't see those flows coming really to fruition for this year. The minimal flow would be coming from Scanell is seventy five hundred gallons a day. That's not going to change our operation, but mm -hmm. when the other projects tie in, we'll be going on to the third vessel here mm -hmm. um, just to manage flows. So there's going to be some higher cost there, maintenance, electricity. Mm -hmm. you know, we're running three different things instead of two, so it adds a third to all our operating costs when we do that. So yeah. and the only other thing mm -hmm. I'd like, if you, if you could, if you have time to do it, would be. So we're going to the new budget for the FY23. Just give us a, a took up two years. Of what do you think it might be coming down the line for capital stuff? 
Yeah. So we can kind of get an idea. That's what I said. I want to do. Yeah, I'll give us a. 22-23. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to give you. So we can, kind of a two-year. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of things that I'll show you that. You know, yeah, it's going to be high. I know it's going to be. High. Yeah, I was going to say that. Coming down the line, I know. The numbers aren't going to be feasible right now. Yeah. Because you know our, our retained earnings isn't healthy. It's right. it's there, but it's not where it should be. But we've used a lot of retained earnings to do major projects. Yeah. That, right. yeah so. So it was nice that we did those without adding to the rate base mm -hmm. to cover the capital projects through a loan or whatever. But um, but we need to start really trying to plan a little, yeah. a little further out. Um, we did apply for um, the asset management plan, um, and that asset management plan will kind of identify a lot of that, looking at the total assets, expected life. Anticipated costs, replacement costs, everything else. So that will help mm -hmm. what, you're, what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be similar to our 20 year master plan for the water. Um, yeah. It does help. It simplifies the budget process there. It's very easy. To, once you get all that in place, it's not just plug in the. Yeah, plug so, the and, and. so on top of that, I think that, you know, I was nervous with the PFAS coming out just because I, I was familiar with it a little before it, it hit the headlines. But it made me nervous and it made me start thinking that we really need to start looking at, you know, our aquifer protect, protection district and those areas that we identified as potential sources. Mm -hmm. um, I think we really need to start getting a plan in place to start looking at those sources and, you know, I'm a, I know some people just like to protect everything, but I think we need to protect what we need to protect yep. and we need to remove what we don't need to protect. I agree. You know, just why protect something that doesn't need it? We'll research and see if there's any other possible areas. I mean, I think there's a potential down Davis Street. I mean, we know that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that was good too, because we removed that. Yeah. We've removed over here, yeah. right. And that's what I mean. So if that wasn't removed, they'd be jumping through yeah, hoops yeah, over there yeah. right now, which yeah, was, is unnecessary. Yeah, I think that was a big key in unlocking a lot of that. Yeah. Getting, <clears throat> getting movement down and, there as well. And I'm familiar with that area. I mean, I've, yeah. it's been, well it's, well, it's 90, so that's 30, 31 years or so. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been familiar with that area for over that amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I would never put a well source over there. It's just, it, it would never happen, and not while I'm yeah. here. Um, you know, maybe somebody well, in the future will try it. since the late 1800s. Yeah, and, and that's I know point. Yeah. And, and I know of many spills and stuff that yeah, happened yeah, yeah. over there. So, yeah. um, so like I said, I'd prefer to protect things that make more sense to protect, and let's utilize the land for what we can to help tax base, customer base, everything else. So. Yeah. I know another topic of, which ties into the into the awkward stuff is that we, we did bring it up once already, but we probably should, uh, we have some time to get into that, is to go through the awkward bylaw and then, Make update that with consistency with the EPA and DP regulations yeah. and a lot of this stuff because some of the stuff was done when it was that was really drafted. They, they didn't have the stuff that the DP things in DP, place, right. yeah. Okay. The Title Five stuff already, wasn't in place, right. and the, yeah, so a lot of redundance. We should take that out and follow DP guidelines and EPA guidelines, not just you know, we think this will be better. So, knowing how much time it took me to, to get through the last process of <laughs> fixing the aquifer stuff, I, know, I, know. I can't do that right now. Yeah, <laughs> That's just yeah. far too much, but I, I agree. We need to look at it as a long term. That was more in the language of the bylaw. That, that one was mapping versus the, this one is more language. Well, we, I oh. think we got 23 out of 25 <laughs> changes that we wanted. Yeah. There was some wording, some in the language, some, I know we, we missed a couple. Yeah. But, um, you know, we had to pick and choose our battle there. Yeah, yeah. So I agree. Well, like I said, I think we should investigate a couple of those. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll get some numbers from Stantec to find out what they think the preliminary cost would be to do just that preliminary finding. Do some test wells, get some samples, see if it's potable water, mm -hmm. potential volumes, you know, maybe test the water first. If it's not good, all right, we'll move on, you know. We let's, let's let's do the preliminary stages to determine, you know, and and I don't know if you want to pick a kind of a schedule once once a year we look at one or once every three years we look at one. I'm sure the cost will determine that. But, yeah. <laughs> um, 
but like I said, I try to pick some of the key spots that we think are, are viable sources and right. identify. We're going to have to do that because there's a lot of a lot of things coming down the line, which is going to increase <clears throat> increase you know that numbers a lot. There is, you know, we're going to with the the anticipated projects, we're getting really close to what our withdrawal permits are, yeah. but. That being said, that's what our withdrawal permits are. Our permits used to be higher until DCR stiffed us with their letter and got them to reduce yeah. our permit. Right, the so permits and availability. Right. Yeah. What we have for capacity and what we yeah. have for permitted capacity is different. Right. So we still have a lot of potential growth, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just a matter of looking at it and determining what the potential growth is in this area where there's sewer available mm -hmm. and what the potential growth outside of the sewer district is as to whether we need to increase the capacity that we have. I mean, I'm looking more as you want to identify other sources. And like I said, I, I want to eliminate spots that we don't need to protect if they're not viable sources. Let's identify them, earmark it. Um, if a property comes up for sale and we realize that that's one that we identified as a potential source, you know, whether we, we try to get something in place now as a, the town has a right of first refusal or I'm not sure how that works. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I have to lean on Matt for that. Right, I'll have to talk to yeah. town council and Matt to find out, you know, hey, we've identified this as a potential source. I mean, we're going to have to go and get permission to check the land. Uh, like I said, I'd rather be ahead of the game. You know, if some other contaminant comes down the road in 10 years that, holy cow, I don't even want to make up a name for what it might be, but... Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden that's regulated and we found out that we're, we're loaded with it, you know, now what are our options? You know, a $20 million treatment plant, or maybe we found a source that's further out that isn't contaminated and mm -hmm. we, we develop it and move forward. But developing a source is, you know, three to five years. So start to finish before you can start using water. You start, you identify it, you know, it's five years down the road before you can use that water. So yeah. I think it would be prudent to get us, at least through the initial phases, and start working towards that if we see the need to increase our capacity first so, we'll start with the so permit. we have we have the the available water we have like what 1.06 million gallons i think it's 966 is is the number i came up with as to the it it's a little bit different because it's it's based on what the approved pumping rate was when they did a pump test mm -hmm. and then there's what we can actually pump because our pumps aren't pumping what we could get at that which is which was one of the reasons I put in there to rehab the wells to try to get them regenerated back to their full capacity, mm -hmm. determine what our pumping rates will be at at those mm -hmm. with it redeveloped. And that'll yes. establish what our available water is, but you also don't want to be at pumping 24-7. You don't want your wells, yeah. wells yeah. to just run 24-7. No. So yeah. um, we do want a little buffer there to, to give them some time to rest in between pump cycles. But... So with the with the permit projects coming down the line, obviously we're going to have to increase our permit, which is a lot lower than that. But so are we, what will we be at like fifty percent? Do you think of, uh, of availability of what we have, have the ability, capable of pumping? Capable of pumping yeah, um, I don't even think we'll be at that. Okay. With all these projects, right now, all the numbers I've run will be borderline what we're currently permitted for, which is four hundred. No, three three. three it was for something, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And now it's 320,000 a day until 2024. Then it goes to 340,000 gallons a day. Okay. So right now we're roughly 200,000 a day. Yeah. So we have some capacity there. So what I was getting at with the inside the sewer district and outside the sewer district, we're only permanent for 600,000 here. Mm -hmm. So we got to factor in... Right, right. You know, this is going to be, you know, we're 600,000, but at 80%, we're going to start designing. So we want to look at those numbers and determine this is as far as we're going to want to go. On the water side. On the, the water with the sewer, the side, sewer side. But we still have potential to to, to yeah. Make some expand areas. outside of the yeah. sewer district. But you don't want to get to that point, and you're going to bring in an additional $50,000 a year in tax revenue, but cost $12 million yeah. right. to upgrade. You know, so we got to look at the whole g yeah. big picture big, as big opposed big to picture. just well, the simple thing. So, okay. All right. So I got your, somebody got your approach. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll come up with a draft. 
and try to figure out a timeline for you, but uh, that's difficult to do right now. So yeah, I'll definitely have at least something for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully within the next couple of weeks I can get you a draft so you guys have some time to yeah. go through it before yeah, the meeting. I'd like to try to approve it at the next meeting. Right. If get through it, because yeah, I'm going to be running in the timeline with yeah. the town as well. So. And then also, um, if you could have a chat with Matt, and just to feel him out, if there's anything that he, th he might think that is coming that we may need to tie up into our budget, if there's anything just, just, just to uh, stay ahead of the game. As in, like, some of these projects, or...? Or anything in general that he may be thinking of that... that uh, I think me and Bob are throwing enough stuff at him. That <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah. but, uh... Yeah, I mean, I'll talk to him. Just, just to, just, it's always good to get another perspective on yeah. something. Just to, but I can tell you, I'm on, a, uh, I'm in regular conversations with yeah, Matt, and yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. okay, you know, we're trying to, trying to play everything out and get a good feel for everything that's going on and potentially going on. So, uh, but I will, we'll talk just have a discussion on yeah. some, ex especially the engineering and things like that. Yeah, and some ideas and. Yeah, because I mean, I I come up with ideas on how yeah, I think, and his his opinion is different. His his opinion differs from mine occasionally. Yeah. So, yeah. and then um, you know, it's, sure, it's always good to have a, a hotty discussion. You get a few people and come up, you know, try I think this, this, this and then you, you work it all out and yeah, come up with a good solid plan. Yeah. So, but I mean, I've already had conversations with him as to kind of where we stand financially, and mm -hmm. you know, we're not we're not viable to come up with six hundred thousand dollars right now. Yeah, no. you know, to go forward with funding it. So my initial thought of that was, if possible, if we could even do half, and then that was that gives us a little leverage to say, look, some with another developer and say, well, if we're willing to do, right. And we're also, um, we've had several meetings, and I actually got an email from him. At, you know, it was after, after our hours, but um, there's some questions. So we have a consultant that we hired to kind of guide us with the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. um, and we're we're still in the discussion phases as to what's eligible, what's not eligible, and what path we can use that money for. Um, but you know, we got we're we're cognizant of the fact that we can't say, oh, we've got ARPA money, we're going to use it for this. Oh, we got ARPA money, we're going to use it for this, and then allocate that you know, two million dollars six different ways, and we're at eight million dollars worth of projects. We only have two million dollars, so we need to be, you know, we need to be realistic about. What we're earmarking ARPA funds for, and what we've already dedicated them to, through either language in some of these contracts and applications that we've done for grants, saying that we're going to use ARPA funds to match certain portions, we can't reallocate that for something else. So mm -hmm. we're looking at that, and we're still trying to get definitive answers as to what is approved for the usage of those funds. So yeah. one of one of those discussions is some of the engineering costs. So. Once we have more definitive definitive answers, then I can give you guys updates on that information as well. So, yeah, don't ask, don't ask Bob; he'll come up with too much. We won't be able to afford what he wants to do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Trust me. I give him. I'll tell you, he's doing a hell of a job, though. I got numbers thrown at me this morning with Bob. Me and Bob. Me, me and Bob are almost like me and my wife. Actually, I, th I probably talked to Bob more than I talked to my wife at this point. <laughs> you know. It's, Nine o'clock at night, Sunday holidays. It, I don't, I don't know if he has a clock, but <laughs> I know. he's a retired pilot. That's what <clears throat> all hours at night. Yeah, yeah. Was like, <laughs> yeah his, his his typical time is between two thirty and three thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that we've got emails going back and forth, yeah. but um, that's funny. Yeah, his clock is definitely different than everyone else's. Yeah. Try to get him to understand. Hey, everybody else is only working these hours, yeah, Bob. You yeah. know? So what do you mean? Don't wait for your answers at uh, three o'clock in the morning because nobody's responding to you, except for me occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so okay. that's that's All where right. we stand on that stuff. So I already talked to one of the things I brought up. I wrote, made a note for job description, but you already answered that. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, anything? So the capital improvement update. So like yeah, I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff that. going on. Yeah. I mean, I brought a couple up at the last meeting. I don't know. Were you here? I don't think I was here at the last one. So. Uh, oh, for this county, I'm sorry. I looked at that as 22. Yeah. Okay. So the, you're talking about the capital yeah. group for the FY22? Oh, I do have my sheet in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
I've got too many piles of paper. They may have been in your book as well. Anyway, there was um, one of the things that, that we looked at was, you know, we potentially need to start considering, uh, oh, there, right here. so here's one, um, so that's a, a mini excavator, I, mean, I, know, I know we've had contact, uh, he wasn't here for that yeah. meeting that we had, so I'm just trying to bring him up to date. Um, so when I went through all the numbers, I went through the specs on about 10 different machines, and that one seemed to be the most plausible for what we would use. Mm -hmm. It's small enough that we can pull it with our pickup trucks. Um, I think that with a dump trailer would be ideal for dealing with a lot of the little stuff. Um, I mean, we've run into some of these where we've got something that we could potentially fix ourselves. Or we got to call, call highway, but you know, like these, we got lucky that these two leaks didn't happen now, because <laughs> yeah, be all them guys were out twenty six hours plowing. You know, none of them would be able to come out and do yeah. a water leak. Yeah. Um, and we could handle a majority of our small leaks with a little machine like that. And it often that makes less mess. It's easier to maneuver. We're not, you know, we've had sometimes we had to pay for landscaping because. You know, Ernie had to go up on someone's front lawn and totally destroyed it to actually get to the angle he needed to to dig. Um, where these machines are smaller, you can get into easier places. Yeah, the handy machines. Yeah, they're, they're, well, you, yeah right. you obviously know. The, so just operator-wise, you have your hydraulics with a boat. I have mine. Steve has it. Steve has it. Yeah. I was, that's what I was going to get to. Right? Yeah, no, me and Steve both have them. Um, I think I put it in the job descriptions, potential licensing. So, in actually, the, the one that keeps knocking down our door has his license. So, so, but anyway, <clears throat> um, so that's one of the things that, that we've kind of identified. Here's, here's another one. So, this is the initial cost that's kind of outfitted with the stuff that we would want. So that's a valve exercise and trailer. So that, so the problem sometimes that we run into with the backhoe or even a mini excavator is we're dealing with a water leak. So you're trying to dig and the water's just freaking pouring in and you can't expose it and the pump's not keeping up and you're trying to, trying to get down to see what the problem is and you can't keep up. So it was nice when they had the back to truck at the highway yeah that was but that was just such a high maintenance cost item it wasn't feasible for the highway department it's just the, the the maintenance was getting beyond something that they could afford so they got rid of that but this it's a little trailer it's got a valve exerciser on it so it exercises the valves it has a gps so it gives accurate coordinates to where the valve is it will automatically send it back to the computer It'll log how many turns, so that'll give you your size of the valve. Um, it'll also give you whether or not it's starting to bind up. You're not getting the full turns that you should be getting, so you know you need to do it more often. It measures the torque, how much torque it takes, so that you know you need might need to exercise it more. Or, you know, we've had some valves where me and Steve are on them with a four foot pipe or a uh, four foot pipe on each side of the handle, and there's two of us. You know, walking in a circle trying to turn these valves, it's so so stiff. Um, and because we don't have equipment like this, I mean, to try to exercise all the valves we have by hand is almost insane. Uh, the valves on Main Street, it's 49 to 50 turns for each one. So sitting there trying to turn it by hand 49 or 50 times, and like I said, one of the last times I had to do one on Main Street, you know, I got a truck parked in front of me, a truck parked behind me, and I'm trying to turn it, and I get whacked in the elbow by a, a, a mirror of a a truck driver by. So, you know, it's not really a safe thing. I mean, Kid and Webster got run over by a truck five or six years ago. There's been three or four where, you know, people got killed, they got run over. And you see the valve wrench still in the in the valve, bent over because the car ran the person over and the valve and the wrench over while they were doing it. So, 
There's been a few of those in the news over the last five to ten years. <clears throat> but this gets you kind of out of that path. It makes it much faster, much more efficient, and we can actually get them done. When we were doing the leak... Am I reading this the right way? So this would have some sort of pressure washer that is that the... So this, this is kind of, we call it the MacGyver trailer. Um, we seen that one of the shows years ago. And, you know, it was kind of a pipe dream back then, but... If it was filled with dirt or something, you can do that all out. So it's got a little vector on it. So it's got a vector. So it's like a, like a one yard little dump vector on it. So you can vector out the dirt. So unfortunately, Dave's vacuum that, you know, we've all had conversations about. It just died on Steve last week. Oh, wow. So I don't know how that thing survived. How that, many ton is that actually? So you know, you know how many <laughs> excavations that thing has done? Yep. <laughs> I can tell you numerous yards of material have been moved by the vacuum. Yeah. Uh, he's so. going to try to repair it. He thinks the fan just came off, but he's going to see if he can fix it. Because <laughs> you can't find one that's as good a quality as that one anymore. They're cheap now. Anyway, that would replace the shop vac that we currently use. Um, that will vector out gate boxes. If we actually had like a gate box, like we had the one on uh, Manchog Road that we could never shut off and change that meter, we finally got to it one year. We went out there with the shop vac and kind of dug a hole with that because you don't want to destroy the guy's front yard because yeah. in the middle of summer yard. But. So we were able to do it with that, but that would have turned it into, you know, an hour job as opposed to four hours out there with a rigid shop back. Um, so that would, you know, do the, the, we could do small excavations, and if Ernie's digging and then it turns into a mud hole and we're getting down close to where we need to get, instead of shutting the main down, we could keep up with that to get us down enough to either get the corp shut off, to stop the leak, without shutting the entire main down. Um, so there's that advantage. Like I said, it logs the turns. When we did, one of the projects that we had up here, I don't know if it was a week, oh, we're doing Cemetery Street. We had to shut down that section on, on Gilboa Street in order to do the tie-in for yes. Cemetery because that valve was no good. Yeah. When we shut that down, we broke one of the valves at the, Square is that one? That's what I was going to say. So I mean, no, no, Kyle. Okay, yeah. Mishner's yeah. the other one. Right? Yeah, Mishner's the other one. I was saying, you guys get me confused. I get too many squares. <laughs> anyway, Carter Square, the one right there, we broke that valve. And based on this leak over here, I'm thinking it's broke closed. Um, because when we had this leak over here, you experienced your second floor. Second floor, okay. So I'm thinking the flow wasn't coming through that way like it should have because that valve is probably broken and closed. Um, first floor had had some on the first floor low pressure and we're upstairs I didn't know there was nothing. Yeah, and I got a call from someone the two most uh most village there. Up front, let's see, yeah, the whole yeah. must have just brought it up the left floor. Yeah, so I got a call from them and that made me concerned because shutting this off should not lose water up there. Because mm -hmm. we should be feeding enough over Manchog Street mm -hmm. and coming in that way, so that valve. So the problem is on these valves, if you don't have exercise them, I mean, it should be a three-year cycle, and that's kind of the plan that I wrote was a three-year cycle to get all the valves exercised. You do a third a year. We just don't have the manpower or the time to get that many valves done. And we're just doing mainline valves, but we still have 300 fire hydrants that all have a gate valve as well. So that's another 300 that need to be added in. Um, but it takes time to do those. But this machine would log it all. We would have good record keeping. We know which ones are looking like they have the potential to be failures in the future. We can plan a little better to you know, replace them before they fail, mm -hmm. um, just so we're not in a situation where we have to go shut down three of the valves yeah. just to get that section shut off. Um, but like I said, it's got the back drum there. That set up, you can buy a bunch of additional things. There's a thing that you can change the operating nut. You know, Normally your operating nut gets rounded. We have two of them over here. C Street was rounded and the old valve, which will be replaced when we do this main, but and so will C Street. But those two are rounded. But we had bought a gator, you know, the gator grip socket that you used to buy for the yep. spark. Well, yep. we've got a big one. It costs like eight hundred bucks. But, but it worked on the rounded nut, so we got them to work. It worked great. So that was a good investment. But we were able to shut those down in order to do this leak we had the other night. But that machine would have some parts that you could buy in addition to the trailer that you can replace that operating nut. It drills it out, you pull the nut out, 
retap it and you can replace the nut without doing excavation. Um, which, you know, in excavation, anytime we do it like a major water leak or something, you gotta factor that. Expense is around 7,500 bucks. So if we can do that, and it's just a matter of, you know, a couple hundred bucks for the parts and a, you know, a couple hours to do it with a machine, and it's well worth it to save you know, $7,500 worth of excavations. So, on the, like say on the, on the Kubota, uh, I know Kubota's offer a lot of, a lot of good incentives like zero interest. So that was, so. that was one of my things last year. I was kind of, I'm like, man, I wish I had talked to the commissioners and had this kind of approved through them because they were offering a five year, zero yeah, percent. I think it's still long. I think it's still going. Right? So if we can buy that and just do it through that option, through it's like 10, 12 grand a year. It's like a double into a hundred. Of, it's that's a very easy yeah, to yeah. absorb in a budget as opposed to a big capital yeah. eighty five ninety thousand dollar machine. That's why it's it, it, well, that. When I first heard that, I'm like, man, a five year deal. It's like I said, ten twelve thousand dollars a yeah. year. Yeah. It's easy to budget, easy to manage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one leak a year. Yeah. You know, yeah. I could have paid for it for the two jobs that I had to do for R H White on on West Street and, and whatever his name is that did this one down here that. Right, just over the coals, but yeah, okay, I'll find exactly like I, I saw it too because I actually considered buying one myself. Yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, Manchuk Mills just bought a nice skid steer, Kubota skid steer. Yeah, and he was telling me about the whole, the whole yeah. I know our Hearns was offering that deal, it was zero yeah. percent. Uh, yeah. it was right in the middle of the COVID crap there, yeah. so I don't yeah. know if it's still going on. It was as of last week because that's why he bought it and he said he went through the he didn't go through our Hearns, so he said he went through. There's three of them around here. It was hard There's the Rhode there. Island one. Um, I forget the name of them, but they're right on uh, that road to go to Wrights. It's not yeah, 44, yeah. 101, yeah. or yeah. 100, or 102, one of those, that road yeah. there. I'll ask. I'll ask. It's up on the hill. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that one, there's a Hearn, and there's another one. We got to what's pretty good. And there's yeah. one in there. He didn't there. get it from a Hearn because they weren't were money. All right. But, so anyway, it was a, I thought I, I and actually I had thought about that, thinking, remembering if we could do something like that. I thought easy. of it because that'd be yeah. easy, be easy to absorb in a budget as yeah. opposed to a big capital on yeah. it and zero percent. It's yeah. free money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that trailer thing also, there's all kinds of attachments. You can it's got a hydraulic setup on it, so you can run hydraulic saws, hydraulic jackhammers. Um, it's got a hydraulic sump pump. Hey, who, so. Who, who, uh, it's watts, E H watt. Okay. So that would be a different. We'd have to. Yeah, this would definitely have to be a different capital budgeted budget. separate capital yeah. item. Yeah. Um, and I, actually, I almost see more. This actually has a Kubota engine too, but um, I see more value in this right now. And I see the value in the excavator. Trust me, I, I got a million projects we could do, but. I just want to avoid having more broken valves, mm -hmm. and we really need to get up, up and running on the, the valve exercising. I mean, it's just between shortage and staff, and like I said, that's a lot of manpower to try to mm -hmm. turn that many valves. Trust me, after doing a couple on Main Street, your arms are dead. So <laughs> you don't have to go to the gym for a week, but. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, well, then why don't we try to see if we can if we can do something with that in the, mm -hmm. in the 23 budget. All right. If that's what you think is, is a... Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, if if that if we could do the zero percent, yeah, you know that's yeah, that's, an that's an easy budget, and then this would this one they're not going to offer anything like that. That's going to be up to pay for. So, mm -hmm. we'll uh, I'll work on the two of them and yeah. figure out what the best, what, what best approach can come up with. I mean, I hate to miss out on the zero percent if we can get that option. Yeah, but, uh, but I got some other angles I'm going to try to play there too. So okay, <clears throat> all right. Um, what else we got? Um, only other thing I was thinking of, I didn't write it down, was I know we had talked about doing go try uh, to explore the quarterly billing. Yep. Uh, I think we had something. She did. She that. actually had the expense, and it was like I think it was around four thousand. If you did the quarterly billing, I think so. Four thousand a year for the additional, you know, postage and all that other stuff. Only for the simple reason, like people still, I get people that ask me, and, I, and the bills are, you know, you get a. If somebody gets a quarterly bill versus if you got water and sewer, you know, the typical say say a water sewer bill is six hundred bucks. 
I mean, eighty percent of the people in America can't come up with four hundred bucks to, yeah. you know, at one point. Never mind, they get a big, you know, six hundred dollar bill. It's going to be due in thirty days. I mean, they should be budgeted for it, but yeah, we things all, happen. We all things, know how budgeting happen. works. Right. Unless you're pretty dedicated and, and good at sticking to a budget, it's hard to do. <laughs> so I would like to. I really would. I know. I know. I know. Bob is in favor of that as well. I think you got to resolve all the staffing issues before you can even consider that, though. Uh, well, there's a couple options there. I mean, we, we get more aggressive with the radio readers. Yeah. Um, you know, because that will cut down the time on the meter reading. And yeah. but I yeah. thought we already thought we had, had hashed that out. That was going to do an estimated, do the same amount of reading, but it was an estimated. Yeah, th we did talk about that. So I think we need to work through it a little further. Um, that's probably going to be a little bit longer of a conversation. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like um, to just see some other system that's doing that too. Most every other, most every other. A lot of systems built <clears throat> quarterly. Yeah, are they estimating? No, a lot of them are. I mean, I had one system that they built four times a year, but they only read meters once a year. Yeah. That was up in Stowe. Sutton, mm -hmm. Sutton's monthly. Yeah, Sutton went to. Uh, it's a monthly bill they do. Yeah, but they went to a fixed base network. Yeah. Which, which, I, which I know it's expensive to do. Yeah, that's. Oxbridge, I think, is quarterly. Uh, I looked at all around. Most every all of them. Are Almost everybody's quarterly. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very. But with like the. We're one of the few left that only do twice a year, but. Saturday. But there's. There's other other things, that I think, come into play there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes I I prefer to avoid saying them on camera, but. No, I know. Um, I know what they're. I know what they're going to be. I know. It's a little more workload coming up, yeah. coming up there, yeah. and we so, got to work that out with them. And so we're at, we're at the end of the meeting. Nobody's watching this. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. And I and I understand that it's a cost doing business. I mean, I can right. built into that. I mean, the reality is it's going to cost us a little more to do that, but it makes it a lot easier for the average it person coming yeah. out. Coming out with. But there's a but cost. I mean, we do offer the payment plans. Um, yeah. I would want to, you know, if we don't go to the quarterly. Then I would probably want to have a conversation with you guys, and we probably need to pull Cheryl and perhaps Gene into the conversation. Because, yeah, in my opinion, it's great that we offer the payment plans. There's really no benefit to the payment plan. No, they could they could do months. I didn't do monthly payment anyway. It, because everything follows the same timeline, we still do shutoffs based yeah. on the same timeline. But nobody's going to so, voluntarily send a check in every month and, so they, unless they get a bill. Right, but so my my take on that, and trust me, I hate to give up revenue, but if you're offering a payment plan and someone agrees to make payments, the demand fee should be waived, and you know that's up to you guys on the interest. You know, I'm up in the air on that one, but... If there's no benefit to entering a payment plan, then why are we taking on the extra workload? And just tell everybody, hey, you got until this date to make your payments. <laughs> you know, if you're smart, you'll make monthly payments. But it yes. adds a lot of workload to Lee, creating payment plans and following them and chasing people down. Mm -hmm. Hey, you missed your payment plan. You're going to make mm -hmm. your payment. Um, it adds a lot of workload where there's really no benefit. Oh, and and maybe, if you went quarterly, that would be gone. And maybe that you do away with the payment plan. Or are those, pe are those yeah. people still going to be the same people that, you know? It's, it, everybody's kind of habitual in what they do. Yeah. You yeah. know, the people that pay their bills pay their bills. The people that can't, can't. Yeah. And it's pretty much carries throughout. Yeah. But like I said, if you're going to offer payment plans, if there's really no benefit other than making people feel happy that they think they got a benefit, what's the point in the extra work? When we're still going to follow the same timeline, if you but don't have it paid by this it time, it goes to the same thing with the quarterly billing. Though it's a service for the for the rate payer. Yeah. Right. So, theoretically, if we they go still quarterly, have do away with the rate, do away with the payment. Yeah, you got to do away with the payment plans. Right. But what I'm saying is that the payment plans are essentially ineffective in the first place. I mean, it does get people to kind of have a all right. I got to pay this monthly. But they don't it have is to do it. right. I was going to say it just disciplines people yeah. as opposed to. You still have the same option. Just send in, mm -hmm. you know, one third of what you owe, and then you can carry it out over three months as opposed to that, and that's going to be before our shutoff date anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, the same thing with the quarterly billing. I mean, you could just tell people every three months go in and make a payment. I know, but, but, they I know, but nobody they does won't. unless nobody they get it. They'll get it on their face and says, oh, yeah. we're going to pay that. Yeah. 
Right. So, like I said, there's a lot of conversation that I think could go on about it. Um, and, you know, it's added workload. But, like I said, if you're going to have a payment plan, you know, and if you offer a legitimate payment plan that would make it so that these people that can't do that once, you know, the, the two big bills a year, and you do a legitimate payment plan, but what's the benefit if there's no, you know, we're entering into an agreement that they're going to make these payments. So why are they still getting penalized with the demand fee and the interest and all that on an agreement that's in place? You know what I mean? There's no there's no benefit more than someone that's just saying, yeah, I'm just not going to pay it until you tell me you're going to shut me out and then I'll pay the whole thing at once. Yeah. You're still getting the demand fee. You're still getting the interest. If they're disposed to make the monthly because they're not going to make If you don't set that up, they won't make the monthly. And then when they get to the shutoff. I know. And, and a lot of people that pay their bills, will still, they get that bill and they're like, Damn, I didn't think it was gonna be this. I don't know. So they, they, they pay it, but they something else gets it doesn't no get paid. It doesn't yeah. get paid. Because they know it's coming. So. Prioritizing which ones, yeah. Right. All right, this one can wait, you know. Right. So that if if you really take the big picture. I gotta miss two of my electric yeah. bills before they shut me off. So I'll wait right. on that one this month right. and, you know. and they'll pay it. But you keep getting behind. So you get the quarterly, I think it just eases the burden and takes less just this puts more people to pay it every I know. I've gone back and, and the cash on flow it. would be better, I think, coming in. But cash flow doesn't, it doesn't really affect us. No, because it's Slightly all, does, just because. We get it by the end of the year. Right. We get a little bit on sweepstakes, flood, you know, yeah. the, the interest and the, the money. In the collections bank. and stuff have been pretty good. The They've last, been good, yeah. You know, collections, this, this last round yeah. was almost unheard of. I think we only had like $3,000 outstanding. Yeah. I mean, so. Well, it's been real good on that. So I think the collection efforts, and that's part of the payment plans, is that it gets kind of a better relationship with the customers mm -hmm. and it keeps on top of them so it makes for better collections but again just my personal feeling is if you're entering into an agreement you're still getting the same penalties yeah. you know if we can wait and I don't know if we can legally waive the demand fee I just think that if we're entering into an agreement you waive the demand fee so there's a benefit to well I don't think there's anything they can do with the interest either I mean that's I think the interest actually comes on like at the beginning of the month, you know. Like I think the interest is the interest starts after the due date. The due date. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, that's just a conversation that we need to. I think it's kind of more of a dedicated. I know. I know. You're saying. A dedicated meeting that we need to sit down and hash out all the different options and and come up with what we think is the best plan. Well, I, I and what's going to work the, with what we've got, right. too. I mean, for for infrastructure, with you know, we, what do we got? One hundred and fifty radio reads. Yeah. You know. Well, I don't think that, I, as far as I understood the last time. We I know, we had had the conversation, but. That, it would, it, that wasn't going to impact, though. We're in the process of the yeah. radios anyway. Yeah. So it's a matter of, do we look at it and step that up? Mm -hmm. Or, and if we, you know, if we got all radios in, there's no problem with going around reading. You know, with a radio, if, we, if everything's radioed, we can do, we can read the town in a day or two. Yeah. You know, really only take a day or two. Yeah. Um, and there's other, there's other issues with only reading twice a year. Uh, when I do my annual report, I got to do a report that I, I tell DEP that this is how much water we pumped this year, and this is how much water we sold, and this is how much went through all the customers' meters, and you know I got to make all those numbers kind of match up, and then we got to have less than ten percent unaccounted for. Yep. But I'm using numbers from readings in February and August, but I'm comparing those numbers to meter readings and water pump from January to December. Yeah. So we're off. So we're not comparing apples to apples, but those are the numbers that I'm working with. So if we had the radios, then I could at least essentially go read on January 1st every year, and it's just this number and this number, and now I'm actually comparing apples to apples, and we can see if we really have a have a, a, an unaccounted for issue, mm -hmm. or if it's just that, oh, well, more people are using water this period because it was dry, but I'm not counting that period because I measured this period instead of this period. Mm -hmm. You know, on a small scale, is it help the average homeowner on the, if they got a toilet that's running? They don't know it's running. And, and right. So and if we can read more often, and that's another thing is, if we had the radios, yeah. even though we only, if we went to quarterly billing, yeah. we could go out and read once a month and just download it and see if we had any alarms. Because we'll get an alarm if it looks like someone has a leaking toilet or something. Yeah. 
on those radios. So yeah, the percentage of the of usage will go up substantially. On right, but there's also in in the iPro meters, the, the plastic meters that we use. Yeah, those have alarms and it will pick up. So if if it doesn't see a 24 hour period with no flow, mm -hmm. then it sends an alarm to say that you have a potential leak. So we might miss it for a month if we're running around reading monthly. You know, not saying that we need to bill monthly. I'm just saying if we, if if, if he's got the radio in the truck, he can drive around town and pick up all the reads, and then just go through and see if there's any any exceptions yeah. or alarms. And we can say, hey, you know, we picked up on the thing that you might have a leak. You know, and that well, will save the, a customer. Would be the opposite, now, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be because the meter would be the usage would go up substantially versus no no usage. If you get a leak. No, it, it's looking to see. It wants to see a period, a one-hour period, or I forget what the time frame is, but it needs to see it, it for a certain amount of time in oh, a 24-hour period. Should, there should be no usage. Everybody's sleeping. Nobody should be using water. There should be a point that you're not using any water. So it looks for that, and if it doesn't see it, you got a leaking toilet because it's constantly it's just got a slow, or you got a dripping faucet that's dripping enough that it's or an out, somebody left an outside spigot on, or whatever, something cracked in the ground, they don't know. Yeah. So it looks to see for that, and if it identifies it, it triggers an alarm, and it stores it until you take the reading. And then if you have the radio read, then it, it'll pull up on the gun and say that there was an alarm. You look at it and see what it was. So there's like 19 alarms in those meters. There's a, a no flow, there's a empty water, so somebody disconnected the, the meter. It'll show that someone disconnected that meter. Um, It'll show if there was a reverse flow, so I'm going to turn it around and try to run water through to you know, spin the meter backwards. These yeah. don't spin, so it won't work. But, yeah. um, so it has all those capabilities, and if we had the radio reads in, we could identify a lot of those issues if somebody's meter froze or you know, whatever. So, yeah. And sometimes those frozen meters, they'll freeze, and you don't realize it until it thaws. And that's when your cellar fills up with water because it, yeah. it's split, but it, the the ice block is yeah. holding it from leaking yet, but once it goes, it goes. If I don't get home and put another log on the fire, I'm going to have a frozen meter. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you guys are killing me tonight. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so what She's got to do the meat in minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, we got uh, we covered all that. So, and then some. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, so I guess... Uh, any other topics? I'm good. good. Okay. So. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.15. Okay. Now we're going to call it. Oh, 